Hey, this is Frank Yosa, CEO of Ketone Aid. And today I want to do a video with no guests. And I just want to cover all of the negative reviews of trying our ester. Um, I know it might be unbelievable listening to all of these different podcasts from Greg Henderson and you know, professional race car drivers, professional motor cross drivers, FBI agents, all with glowing results. Someone might do what I do, which is start, start questioning it. Whenever I'm on Amazon and I'm about to buy a product, I always go to the, I don't care if there's 800 good reviews, I wanna to go to the, the one star and two star reviews and take it from there. Also when hiring a wedding photographer, you should always look at the worst photo in the person's photo book, because that's what you know, everything else is expected. You, know, you have to have that as your minimum expectation. So I wanted to go over some, and I wanted to have guests on the show, but sometimes some of the problems that I'm gonna talk about were user error. So, you know, they're not going to be the ones that want to talk about how they didn't follow the protocol. But I want to go over some four different instances where it was not as amazing and great as, you know, everyone had hoped. So the first person, here's one person that took it, we'll call it uh, not great or bad review number one. He did a uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 3, 2, 1 reps of each of the of a bench press deadlift pull up push up squats um, this was done consistently as fast as possible with no rest in between exercises and then he went to a treadmill peak velocity test uh, 2.9 mile indoor cycle for time total workout was about one hour in length and here was his recap or his conclusion unfortunately my performance on the ketone aid was lower than with the carbs alone I did not seem to react well to the beverage. So then I, you know, that was the first time we had gotten a negative response like that. So we had to then hammer out, well, what did you do exactly? Did you follow the protocol? He said he followed the protocol exactly. And then his email seemed a little bit strange because he was talking about comparing the carb drink to the ester drink. But what he missed was you have to take it at the, you have to take both of them, not at the same time, but you have to take the carb drink first and then the ester, that's one test. And then you uh, take just the, the carbs to see how it compares. And it turns out that he did not follow the protocol. He did just carbs versus just ester, and he had worse than baseline. And I could have told him that would have happened with this type of uh, uh, breath intense, VO2 max challenging course, you just, won't be able to get the same performance because you can't get enough air into your system. You're just swapping fuels. When you take the ketones, it makes your blood glucose tank, so you're just swapping out fuels. You have to take a whole bunch of glucose first, and then when you take the ketones, your blood glucose goes down and you're working with the dual fuels. So he just did not follow the protocol. So I'm hoping that he will give us another shot and try it again and, and report back. So that was you know review negative review number one. Um, I'll put that into the his fault camp. Now, our fault. We had someone that we changed the protocol. Whenever we change the protocol, it's, it's tempting to change the timing just a little bit, just to try different things. And this time, instead of taking the ketone ester 10 minutes before your half an hour warm up, we instead had him take it 10 minutes before the race. Not good. So he said that he was having uh, stomach problems because he went, you know, it was a cycling race. I think it was a one hour race and they went, you know, zero to 60 full speed. And just imagine if you're doing a 400 meter race, if you took uh, a bunch of gel packs, you know, one minute before lining up or maybe 10 that your system can't process that. So that's what we learned from that. He did not like that sensation. However, he did like uh, the rest of it. And maybe we can actually get him on video to talk about the pros and cons. But that was, I would say, you know, a three star out of five performance. Not great. That was our fault for changing that protocol. So we have to go back with him to the old protocol and see how that goes. And then the third uh, out of four instances that didn't go as well was a triathlon. Uh, two problems here. One, he did it on game day for the first time. His, his coach had experimented with other, you know, ketone products. Um, some salts, some 13 butane dial, which is pretty rare. So, you know, hats off to them. So they had some experience and they were willing to try it out. But then we had a 
to change the protocol as well. So problem number one is taking it for the first time in the race because everyone might react differently to it. The second problem was we had to change the protocol. Given that the triathlon, the first race, the first part of the race is a swim, we didn't want him in the middle of the ocean and having you know, some problems, you know, just wouldn't be a good thing. So then we moved the protocol to be you know, the, the same, uh, uh, taking the, the 60 grams of glucose and then 20 minutes later, the 60 grams of ketones, but doing it right after the swim as he's on the bicycle. That did not work well. It was it was horrible. I would say that, that was a I would say that was a one out of five stars, and he had to actually pull out of the race. That's how bad it was. Um, and what we suspect happened there was there's this unique dynamic that we don't fully understand what's going on. Where when you carb load your glucose spikes and then your insulin spikes to kind of get you back in check, and when you take the the ketone drink it takes the, the glucose numbers way down, way down, and it's that dual fuel that you need. We're thinking now that if you take that combination in the middle of a race, you're not gonna get the same insulin spike that you would because you're using the energy. So normally, people will do, be doing it resting, they'll take the carbs 20 minutes and then take the ketones. But it's a completely different dynamic if you're you know going all out in a race during that time. So that dynamic just, does not work and then it's you know shame on us for allowing him to do it race day so that was i was not good that was horrible um to to drop out of the race i think the the coach said he lost you know several thousand dollars so uh we are trying to make it up to him we sent him another one to try at practice exact protocol and see if it was him or the protocol i'm pretty sure it's going to be you know the protocol taking it mid-race it doesn't uh that exact way that he took it does not work. We think there will be another way to take it, but that way doesn't work. And then we had a, a fourth athlete that took it um, at the same time as the carbs. Uh, they took the carbs and the glucose nearly at the same time. And this was after n not, not doing the right protocol one time. You then, we, we sent it to him again, and I'm on the phone with him, and he, he's talking about how he just took the, the, the carbs and then before you know it he says that he just finished the ketones and I'm like wait a second that was four minutes and he said uh oh did I mess that one up and I said well you know we've always wanted to test them at the same time so we'll see how that goes and he said that was probably a three I would say that would be a, a three star out of five it was not the gangbuster results that he had the first time that he did the proper protocol um, but he just does what, the first half an hour just was sluggish. The energy wasn't there, the combination. So that was a three star. So it is all brand new science. We're still trying to figure out, you know, every sport is gonna be uh, different. So each sport might require a completely different protocol. So we're trying to go through all of the different sports and be able to you know, list out exactly the best way to take it. But one thing for sure that we know is that the, you do need the dual fuels. Um, I also had unexpected results, so I wouldn't you know, give it a, a star rating, on one uh, weightlifter CrossFit type workout where he had taken the proper protocol and had a great performance. That's uh, Bill the Marine on ketonaid.com. But I gave him just the ketones alone and he called me up and he said, I, I'm sorry, you know, I was really looking forward to the performance game that I had the last time. Sorry, it didn't work. Uh, it was just the, the same as, you know, a regular typical day. And I said, perfect. He's like, what? perfect. What do you mean? I just blew a drink. You know, this drink is so rare that I've only drank it, you know, once in 18 months. Uh, I Frank. And he's, I said, well, we expected that that would happen uh, because you're just swapping out your glucose for ketones. And sure, ketones are more power dynamic, but nothing that would be noticeable versus uh, two fuels on top of each other. So I said to him, that was expected. Thank you very much for proving that out. And he's like, oh, okay. You know, he was hoping and expecting performance, but didn't have it. So there you go. There's four or five examples. Um, I just thought I'd lay that out because I did get an email from someone saying, hey, you know, let's try this. You know, because all your results have been great. I said, no, no, it doesn't work that way. You've got to tinker and try different things so you can achieve new levels. But in doing so, you know, we've had some hiccups. So I thought I'd share that, and hopefully we can get some of those people on here and they can share that 
firsthand.